I've never been the biggest fan of massively multiplayer online role-playing games, or MMORPGs as the kids say. I don't know, something about the way the games are structured, and the fact that a lot of them back in the day required a monthly subscription fee, never really appealed to me in any way. Also, for the most part, all of these games were set in a high fantasy setting. Things like EverQuest, Final Fantasy, World of Warcraft. Now, I have nothing against high fantasy. I like me some Lord of the Rings, some Harry Potter and all that, but I've always been more of a science fiction superhero kind of guy. But then again, when they did go and make MMOs based on things that I actually like, like Star Wars and DC Comics, I skipped those and went on to play other games. Well, not this time. This time I actually decided to sit down and play DC Universe Online because really I have no excuse not to. For one thing it's free and for another thing it is available on every major modern video game console and that includes the Nintendo Switch. DC Universe Online is a free-to-play, massively multiplayer online role-playing action game developed by Daybreak Studios and published by Warner Brothers Interactive. This game originally came out for the PC and the PlayStation 3 in 2011. It was also a PS4 launch title. Eventually, it made its way to the Xbox One in 2016 and the Nintendo Switch just a few weeks ago. The game has become pretty successful over the past nine years. It's gained a sizable cult following and Daybreak has often updated it with new and interesting content to keep players invested. And plus the concept alone just sounds really cool. You get to create your own unique hero or villain and have them pal around with the existing heroes and villains of the DC universe. And you get to do that on a big scale with other people doing the same thing. That's kind of rad. And yet despite the fact that this game is free to play and I did download it for every possible console, I've never played DC Universe Online. I don't know, maybe it's just my preconceived biases towards the genre, maybe it's because other games were coming out and I was much more interested in them. But now the game is available for the Nintendo Switch. And because I work for a YouTube channel that's most popular for its Switch videos, I have the perfect excuse to finally play this damn thing for the content. What? I'm not playing that stupid game. Get out of here, I'm busy. Of course, I have played superhero games for the content before, and I've wound up really enjoying them. I still play Marvel Ultimate Alliance quite regularly, and there are days where I get the itch to go back and play Spider-Man on PS4 again because it really was that damn good. But I think we've hit a superhero game I've played for the content that I'm just not all that into. I don't think I'm going to be returning to DC Universe Online very often, if at all. I'm admittedly not that far along in the game, but from the time I did spend with it, I just found it to be too repetitive and ultimately too uninspired to hold my interest for a very long. But initially, I was into it. I booted up the game, I got to watch the rad intro cutscene that I've seen before, but it's still awesome to watch, and then I got to create my own custom superhero. And the character creation isn't too bad, honestly. They have a fair amount of customization for you to create your ideal hero. It adheres to the Jim Lee-inspired art style template that the rest of the game has, and it looks pretty good. I was excited because I thought, oh, this is a chance for me to bring back my old original fanfiction character from high school, Brown Bird. Do not laugh, you all had an OC character back in high school. I thought I could make him a gadget-based superhero and that way he could pal around with Batman. High school Will would have lost his mind at the mere concept of that. Then high school Will would have gotten super pissed because picking a color for the character is not intuitive at all. Choosing the right color for Brown Bird was a real pain in the ass. I had a hard time selecting what I wanted to select in the menu. You have predetermined colors you can pick from or you can try to pick the right shade, but that's really hard to do. Ultimately, I wanted it with a character that looked more like Vomit. I was able to fix it later in the game, but just barely. And for some reason, the color select interface in game is very different from the color select interface during the initial character creation screen. But after all that, I was finally able to play a tutorial mission on Brainiac's ship. The experience wasn't too bad. You got some standard melee and range attacks, and honestly kind of felt 
like Ultimate Alliance at first. You work your way through a linear level, you beat up wave after wave of bad guys, and you get to do it alongside the Justice League. The problem is that this quickly becomes all you do. Once you're done with the tutorial, you get to explore the open world environment, where you pretty much just go around and beat up wave after wave of bad guys. Sometimes you can take up missions, which pretty much involve you going to specific locations, and then beating up more bad guys. Maybe you'll have to interrogate X number of enemies or shut down Y number of devices, but the typical gameplay structure is get the mission objective, go to the location on the map, beat up some bad guys, go to a second location on the map, beat up more bad guys, go to the sewer or abandoned warehouse to keep beating up bad guys until you finally beat up the boss. If you're lucky, Nightwing will help you out. And this grind gets real repetitive real fast. Even when I left Gotham City and eventually took a mission in Metropolis, it was pretty much the same exact thing. The only difference is now it took place during the day. It doesn't help that the open world environments are overall lifeless and dull. There are a lot of people on the map, sure, but they're all clustered in certain areas of the city. If you find yourself on the other side of the map, you could be wandering around a barren wasteland. At least in the open world environments, you do have the ability to fly around the city at any time, which admittedly is really cool. Even if you're a gadget-based character like my character is, in that case, you can climb up the walls and just glide perfectly. Okay. Now, it's not necessarily the repetition that's bothering me with this game. After all, I'm a big fan of 16-bit beat-em-ups, and those games are repetitive as hell. No, I think what I ultimately don't like about DC Universe Online is that it touts itself as this big, never-ending superhero experience, but I never feel like I'm accomplishing anything. Aside from leveling up, I don't really feel like I'm doing anything of importance in the game. Also, during my entire playtime, I got the sense that I was playing this big, massively multiplayer online game by myself. Now, I'm not knocking the game for having a single player component or letting you play it by yourself. I actually applaud it for doing that. A lot of multiplayer games just are unplayable if you play solo. But you would think that a game like this would be more aggressive in trying to get people to play together, but it really isn't. Even when you get pop-ups saying that a raid is gonna happen and you need to be part of a team to be in that raid, it doesn't penalize you for passing on it. So you could theoretically go through this entire game by yourself. And if you ask me, that kind of defeats the purpose of a massively multiplayer game. Now, could it be that I feel this way because I am in fact playing the base game? Could it be that if I bought one of the downloadable episodes for DC Universe Online, I would have a different opinion on the subject? Well, maybe, but there's like 34 downloadable episodes for DC Universe Online. Do I really want to spend hundreds of dollars just to make the game better? And it's not just extra missions that cost real world money. Certain items and power-ups also require you to spend real world money to acquire them, like a bigger utility belt. This is something you will need pretty early in the game, but are you willing to spend $5 right away for something that should be basically free or at least be able to earn in game? So yeah, needless to say, this is not a game that excited me all that much during my playtime with it. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I had a different game in mind when I actually sat down and started to play it. Again, this was my first MMO, so I really didn't know what was going to happen, but I don't think I'm going to return to the genre anytime soon. Now, I know there are other games in the genre and they're all very different. And I'm sure some of you in the comments are furiously yelling at me to play this game or that game. But I don't know, guys. I mean, if Batman couldn't get me interested in playing an MMO, what hope is there for Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft? to get me to play an MMO. I might come back to DC Universe Online down the road, but not in any regular capacity. Maybe just pick it up here and there to quickly level up or play in quick bursts while I'm waiting for the microwave to finish. Because there were things about this game that I actually did like. I did like the character customization, minus picking the whole color aspect. I liked all the cutscenes they play after missions with the comic book inspired art. I like all the fan service and references they have in the game. I like hearing Kevin Conroy as Batman. But my next gaming addiction? I don't think so. I think I'll stick with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Or Red Dead, I did start playing that again. Man, two weeks in a row and I've been negative towards new DC releases. Is there anything for me to be positive about? 
Oh, hey, it's the 10th anniversary of Arkham Asylum. That game still holds up. Yeah, this game's so awesome. Have you guys tried DC Universe Online for the Nintendo Switch or any video game console that it's out on? Did you enjoy it or did you find it too repetitive for its own good? Let me know down below or anywhere on the internet. The game is free to play, so you could theoretically just go out and play it for yourself and see if it's a game that you'd be interested in. You wouldn't lose anything other than a couple minutes of your time. So I say at least download it and give it a try. If you wind up liking it, that's great. Keep playing, if not, Delete it off your hard drive. It's no harm. Of course, don't forget that we have new videos every Tuesday and Wednesday with Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, Beating Wolf Den Live. So subscribe to see all of that, like this video, and share with a friend. A friend who's always been on the edge about whether or not to play DC Universe Online. Show them this video and maybe it will persuade them to step back for a minute and think if maybe this is not the game for them. Because I thought it was the game for me. But I don't think it is anymore. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.